Okay. So, here we go. Uh, here is Igor Slavik speaking, and let me introduce, today is my special guest, Tom German. How are you going? <laughs> I'm okay, and you? Yeah, very well. Uh, where we are meeting? We are, uh, we're in Bruno. Yep. If, you pronou- if I pronounce that right? Bruno is okay. Bruno, yeah. yeah. So uh, we're in the Czech Republic after the World Fly Fishing Championships, which were just in Slovakia last week. Okay, okay. And what is your day today? Uh, we, well, I was very lucky because uh, Greta and I came here and you took uh, you took me chub fishing, which was very fun. Yeah. And you don't have chub in Australia? No, no, no. We don't have chub. We have uh, some species of carp, but uh, okay. which we saw some carp today, but we didn't. We don't have anything like chub. They eat a dry fly so well. It's so much fun. Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Yo, anyway, I didn't say that you are from Australia. So, and uh, how is your performance on the World Champ? Uh, so this World Championships was a really good campaign for the Australian team, um, and we came seventh, which was really good for us. Ooh. And uh, myself personally, I came fourth over individually, which is quite Fun- cruel. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic performance. Yeah, uh, I know you a few years already, so I think this is so far the best result. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And on uh, how many how many times you were on World Champ? This is my this was my sixth World Championship. Six already. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, my, lot. my first one when I was 23 and now I'm 30. Ooh, yeah. It's cool, cool. So and uh and I did the uh, best uh performance was uh, which number? Uh my n- next best performance was 17th. 17th. In Ooh. Slovakia. Again. As, well, yeah, so Slovakia tw- 2017, I came 17th. And then, uh, yeah, this time fourth. Slovakia fourth. So next five, next five, five years will be in Slovakia. So you will be on yeah, finally on medal position. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that last time on Slovakia we were uh, also as a team really great performance. Yeah, you we were fifth. I think we came fifth. Yeah. So my, I remember my first one yeah, for Australia was 2016 okay. in Colorado. Our team came seventh. That was my first one when I came 18th. Then Slovakia, our team, we just got better and better. We had a great time there, uh, and then we had a, like a refreshment of new blood coming through, and now we're building up again. So yeah, S- super, super. So uh, come uh, to the start of your fishing because I already uh, said to you that uh, the scenario of this uh, interview is almost uh, the same. Uh, I ask how you started with fishing. It was your own path, or you some you have some leader. Yeah, so it was actually my uh, my dad was uh, how I got into it. So believe it or not, so I was born in Australia, uh, as was my dad. But when I was two years old, we moved to the UK, to London. Ah. Uh-huh. So, and my dad was already into fly fishing then, and he got right into the stillwater fishing. Mm. Um, so stillwater lake fishing in the UK. And I remember as like, uh, well, I barely remember as three, four-year-old Tom on a Sunday going down to the uh, the local Stillwater with dad and, you know, him fishing. I had like a little, like a five weight, eight foot rod or something and I used to wave around with him. Um, so we did that from a very young age and then when our family moved back to Australia, it just kept going. Dad and I always just kept fishing together. So, so you started immediately with fly fishing? Yeah. So yeah. there is no other style be- before? Uh, we did... Um, There was always a mix, like, you know, we'd fish for, I remember we had holidays in Europe and we'd fish for carp. We had a, we fished for carp in Italy. I remember as being very young. Um, uh-huh. But when we came back to Australia, it was fly fishing and everything. So we had a house by the beach and we did a lot of fishing in the salt water uh, with bait and with lures and stuff. Uh-huh. So did pretty much everything, but okay. always focused on fly fishing because it was my favorite. Okay, so and uh, when you dad show you everything about fly fishing, so probably he showed you also about fly tying. So you started uh, also really quickly, or yeah, I started dad. So dad used to go to fly tying classes in London, and I saw it. And he kind of stopped, and then I kind of took over the fly tying, and I did a lot of fly tying when I was twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then that ma- I really started tying flies a lot when I was 15 and 16, which was when I started competition fishing because okay. I realized I needed to tie my own flies mm-hmm. for real. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, 
uh, the competition fishing. So this is next level. So and how it is in Australia because you are so far. So we don't know <laughs> how it's your your system uh, of of uh, competition. Yeah, so it's very different competition fishing in Australia. Um, I remember uh, David Klumski was over in uh, Tasmania this summer, and he said to me, "Tom, your competition fishing is amazing because it's such a big country, and we all travel so far." And I remember, so I'm from Victoria, mainland Australia, in mm -hmm. uh, the southern like corner. And uh, I'd flown to Tasmania to compete in a state competition. And he said for him, he doesn't drive more than two hours to a competition. <laughs> yeah, maximum is three hours, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have, uh, at the moment, the southeastern area of Australia is where all of the competition trout fishing is. Mm -hmm. So the three main states, New South Wales, Victoria, and Tasmania. Okay. And we all travel between all three states. So, you know, one competition to, to drive, for example, to the national championships last year, uh, I drove nine hours just to just to go to the national championships. <laughs> It's incredible. So, and uh, here some people are crying that they have to go one hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. How I said it, uh, we can, uh, even if you are going from Brno, uh, I think I can, during half an hour, to to collect 10 competition during the year. Really? Uh, maximum hour. Oh. So, so many competitions are around here. Yeah. And this is only uh, chops and lakes and some trout fishing. Yeah. So it's it's really hard <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we only, like, you guys are so lucky. You have all the different species. Um, we don't have, like, chub or anything like that. So all our competitions in Australia are trout competitions. So no gra no European grayling, mm -hmm. no chub, anything like that. It's all brown and rainbow trout for us. Just just trout? Yes, just trout. Yep. So you, do, you don't fish uh, a carp for f competition? No, no, a carp doesn't count in our competition. Doesn't count? No, even uh, perch. You, catch, you could catch a good perch. Like, we have a lot of big English perch, like mm -hmm. European perch. And, yeah, they, they don't count in our competitions. Mm, interesting. So uh, you started to tie your own flies about 15, 16. And uh, how long does it take uh, to be a little bit better tire? <laughs> I think every fly you ever tie, you get better and better and better. <laughs> so how, how much uh, now, if you are in a hurry and you want to uh, tie really fast, how many flies can you tie during one hour? One hour. I think you could tie, uh, you know, like you'd be three minutes for one fly. So, so 20 flies? Yeah. If you're tying pheasant tails, okay. you're tying nymphs for the river. You I mean think. you mean sacred flies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like everybody has. Yeah, yeah. Pheasant tail <laughs> and a hare's ear. <laughs> Maybe a tag, tag nymph. <laughs> okay. So it's it's a lot. Yeah. It's It sounds like you learn it when you were young. Because we, we, we learn it when we were older. So yeah, I'm not so far. <laughs> I I can I can do when I am really fast. I think ten flies, ten yeah. flies. It depends. I it, you can't tie that many that quickly for hours. But if you had to race, you could. <laughs> I think because you normally have a sip of a drink, you have something to eat in between this fly. Yeah. You change the music yeah. or Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you're on Netflix, I am tying one fly per hour. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so you started a uh, competition. How it's system of your competition in uh, Australia? So uh, we have, so competitions, we have uh, like two levels of competition. Okay. So we have state state level, which you would call domestic. So we have state competitions in uh, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania and sometimes South Australia and or sometimes actually Queensland and Western Australia, but not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone can enter that those competitions. So any you could come to Australia um, even even as a foreigner as a foreigner. So when you come to Australia and uh, we catch up, you could come and f enter one of our competitions. Super. Yeah. So anyone can enter uh, to score points to foot towards your ranking. You need to be a member of the association. Ah. Uh -huh. Fly fish. So you could you could enter as a not a member, and you know you could win the competition, but you wouldn't score points to be selected for the Australian team. Yeah. Um, but It's yeah. impossible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah anyway. <laughs> um, so we have you you score points at the state championship level and then every year we have a national championships. Okay. So and that rotates, that goes from 
Tasmania to Victoria to New South Wales each year. And then, so one year Victoria, one year New South Wales, one year Tasmania, and it continues in a cycle. So how our ranking system works is you fish, uh, so we have points accumulate over three years. So you Ooh, must so fish. Long. Yeah. But you only take, you take your two best state competitions mm-hmm. from the year and the national championships. And the points from the national championships are worth twice, double okay. of the state competition. And normal points are 20, 30 or? Uh, so you can, if you win a competition with 30 people in the competition, you get 30 points. Mm-hmm. If you come second in the competition with 30 people, you get 27 points. It drops down by three. Three down, okay. Three down, three down. So the person, yeah. Um, and then the national championships, we have 60 people. Person who comes first gets 60 and drops down, drops down. Okay. And to your ranking, you didn't count, uh, you don't count also the competition uh, or like a uh, Commonwealth? No. So or world champ? No. So world championships and international competitions doesn't, uh, doesn't count affect to your ranking. Yeah. And so you could actually fish, uh, you know, you could, like I remember maybe three, three years ago, I was fishing probably 10 competitions in Australia For the year. So, so all, and this is a lot in Australia? Yes, or? yes, yes. Because uh, back then, you know, each state only has a few competitions. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, every competition we have is run over one weekend. So both Saturday and Sunday. Because I know you guys have a competition over one day. Yep. You can have one day competition. We can. Yeah. There's none in Australia. It's all two day competitions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you c- I used to fish 10 competitions for practice a year, even though I could only take my best two results for my ranking points. Mm-hmm. So no matter how many competitions you compete in, you still only get your best two mm-hmm. results and the nationals, which goes into your year yearly ranking. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, make it. Yeah, yeah, com- yeah. Oh, yeah. And the one thing I didn't mention is, so this year's uh, points are worth 100% of their value. Last year is only worth 60%. Yeah. And the year before is only worth 30%. <laughs> It makes a little bit more confusing for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but I understand. Yeah. So uh shortly in our country is so that you can you can fish as many uh, competition you you can you yeah. want. We have uh first league, second league and divisions. Yeah. This is team competition, which I uh understand correctly, you don't have team competition. This yeah. is all individual. All individual. Yeah. So in our country we have mainly uh team competition and then uh, some We call it goulash competition because you got goulash for free <laughs> <laughs> as, as a part of uh, money you yeah. get in. So, and uh, uh, we count 10, 10 competition. 10, yeah. Yeah, but the most active people last year was Martin Kochi and he had 28 competition per year. That's incredible. That's, that's really incredible. Yeah. yeah. Normally, I think people has average about 15 to 20 yeah 15 yeah and 10 are counting to the ranking yeah we have 40 for national one down yeah 30 for first league 25 for second league and it's going down yeah but we count also uh, the world champ yeah this is for 60 uh, okay, one yeah. down mm-hmm. and 50 for european champ one down yeah okay wow so it this is This is kind of uh, uh, when we are ta- uh, when we are uh, uh, counting also uh, the European and World Champ. This is because that it's kind of uh, advantage for people who are already in a national team. Yeah, to keep there a little bit. Well, uh, it, the consistent team. We yeah. actually had that system. It came in for about one year or two years. And then uh, people in Australia didn't like it, so okay. they got rid of it. Mm-hmm. So because people thought it would be too hard to get into a team, if because the people in the team would be earning points from competing at the World Championships, so how would anyone ever get in? So they got rid of that. So whether that's right or wrong, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, yeah. but but uh, I mean, it's right. Yeah, in my uh, opinion, while. If you if you uh, take a look on the team who are 
consistent uh, in the top of the uh, ranking. I mean, I mean, in a world champ and yep. European champ, this is all the time the same people. Yeah, one one person is another, two person uh, another. But uh, but uh, all the time, French team, Spain team are almost the same. Yeah. So and I I think it's also uh, one of the reasons that they are so good. Oh, we are so good yeah. yeah yeah because the people are staying there a little bit longer yeah and we talked about that today like you guys there's so much experience and you can't compare you know ex- experience is irreplaceable especially in the biggest competitions yeah It's yeah, yeah how yeah we, we are talking about it that uh, com- competing you run only on the competition not not uh learning uh i mean uh Uh, le- uh, reading something or uh, looking on the videos. Yeah. You have to compete. Yeah. So and uh, our people, our our boys, uh, use if they are starting in a young age, they have 10 competition per year, 15. If they are going also to uh, to uh, older category, 20. Yeah. So it's a lot. Yeah. That's so much driving <laughs> in Australia. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's it's the same in uh, New Zealand. And uh, when I spoke with guys from uh, from Canada, yeah, they f- they fly <laughs> like you have over to. the continent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just the more time you spend in the sessions, more. Okay, so the system is you how you said, and uh, this is individual uh, competition. Yes, uh, and the uh, uh, selection for national team, how it is. Only the first five is going to World Champ, second five is going to Commonwealth, how it works. So this is where it gets slightly com- <laughs> complicated <laughs> again. <laughs> so there's no we used to have selectors and they could choose five from the top ten. Uh I don't understand uh, uh, what selectors. Uh like uh people choosing the team. Yeah, yeah. So I I know what does it mean. Yeah. But I don't know uh, who who the people oh, are. Well we don't have them anymore, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> But so now it's the system is very simple. For the world championship, the rankings over three years of competition, you have you get one, two, three, four, five. The top five r- rankings in the country go to the world championships. Yeah. It's that, a, it's a, it's a Uh, it's a rule. It's a rule. No, you know. Okay. So if someone say the best angler happens to be seventh, well, t- it, they they don't go because they're not in the top five. Okay, and there is question if you are going to a uh, world champ. Yeah, it's always from Australia, really far, really expensive. Yeah. So how does it work? Uh, because sometimes the fifth or f- third will say, "Oh, I don't have money." Yeah. How so, it works. So if the, f- and that's happened, you know, in the, the past few years where you've had guys selected like uh, Lubin and Staggy, like really good anglers who said, look, I've done so many, I'm not going this year. So then it they, go- pass. they pass and then it goes oh. to the sixth ranked angler or the seventh ranked angler. And the re- only reason, you know, the guys pass on it is, uh, and there'll come a time when I will have to say, look, sorry, I can't go even when I'm in the top five. Because it's so expensive, mm-hmm. so we pay pretty much everything. Ah, so yeah. you don't have you don't have any uh, money from your know, fishing union or from. We get a tiny bit. We get uh, so from the national body, Fly Fish Australia. Okay. For the whole team, which was six guys for this competition, we got four thousand Australian dollars. Four thousand and expenses is uh, at least ten thousand per person. Yeah, flights were three thousand per person. So yeah. we get you know, a tiny bit, but it but does. At it, least it's something. Some, yeah. It's something yeah. is better than nothing. Yeah. And can you can you collect because I I maybe I saw on your Facebook or Instagram can you collect uh, some money uh, for as a crowdfunding or some, something? Yeah, you can do some fundraising. Um, so teams in the past we have uh, we've done fundraising as a team. You know each state. So where I'm from, Victoria, the state gives money to their anglers going they give a little bit mm-hmm. and so my local fishing club does as well they give me a little bit to go but other than that it's yeah uh it's easier to you know you can raise money by crowdfunding but it's almost uh easier to just go to work yeah. <laughs> <And> <laughs> for the same amount of time yeah. 
Yeah, the fundraising also is work. Yeah. yeah, and that's what our team this year decided. We we kind of were, you know, thinking and we just went, let's all just, <laughs> we're going to go. So Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because in our country, we have everything paid. To go to the world championships? Everything. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm in the wrong country. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another reason that I, I think that uh, the Czech are good. Yeah, because it's not uh, depend on how much you ha- money have. Yeah, definitely. Because there are there are people even in a not really rich uh, situation. Yeah. Uh, so and in our country it works like this that uh, for we have we have about forty four hundred thousand fisher fishermen. Yeah. And they paid uh, kind of. Uh, I think that mark or how call it uh, for uh, for sport, oh, and yeah. it's divided to all different kind of fishing sport, even for this casting for on the target, yeah. even for floats, for spinning, for another kind of uh, yeah. And uh, but this this amount of money is quite huge. Yeah, so it's you're saying it's the they all for the license they pay some of that money gets divided. <laughs> This yeah. this is not license. This yeah. is this is part of uh, uh, I don't know how to call it in English. So this is part of you pay to f- fly fishing union. Oh, okay. Yeah. S- this is not part of license. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, this this is because it's so huge amount of uh, fisher fishermen. Yeah. So it's quite huge amount of money. So and we are really pleased that uh, Czech fly fishing union and Moravian fly fishing union give us this money. Yeah. And we can we can use it. So and also we have some sponsors. Yeah. But mainly this is sponsors that they gave us uh, stuff. Yeah. Things. Sure. So I I mean it will be the same in uh, Australian team. Uh, so we in the past years we have had some sponsors, um, you know, with uh, you know some people will give a bit closer, bit please. Oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too relaxed. Um, yeah, so in <laughs> so in Tasmania, like we had, um, you know, we had like uh, Mayfly tackle and scientific angler. We got given some Sims waders as well, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's happened in past years, but. It's so hard in a small, you know, we're such a small country of fly fishermen. Uh, it's the value is not really there for the sponsors mm-hmm. to, yeah, to make it work really as much. Like, so, you know, uh, we're very lucky. We get given access to, uh, to people in the teams, um, you know, we'll occasionally get given stuff here or there, or we'll get support from mm-hmm. certain brands, but not, not sponsorship like you guys. Yeah, yeah, we we are cooperating with uh, the most with Hana competition, so we get some uh, some discount. Yeah, and some stuff uh, for free, and also for this year, I I found some new sponsors, oh. but they they give for example Ortlip, oh. the this this uh, watertight uh, bags, oh. and another another brand. Do also. they want to come sponsor Australian <laughs> team as well? <laughs> you have to ask, <laughs> <laughs> but but you you say that you had uh, you have some sponsors as a. Person. Yes, yeah. I'm and this is because your guiding uh, service? Yeah, it's because I'm full-time in the industry, so I'm very lucky to be uh, supported by Mayfly Tackle in Australia, who do Scientific Angler, mm-hmm. Orvis, and Hanak Competition as well. So Super. Yeah, they're very, like, amazing. They support me, and they, yeah, help me, you know, get to this stuff, uh, get to these events and do everything. So and with gear. This is your main job? Yes, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are guiding. How many? How many days you are guiding? Uh, about between eighty to one hundred. I reckon around eighty last season. Eighty days a year. <laughs> And what do you do the la- rest of the uh, year? What do you do? <laughs> sleep some sleep. <laughs> no I sleep. Fish myself. Uh, tie the flies. I also was telling you about uh, the fly range. Okay. Um, you know the f- the the online fly shop, so you can purchase some of my flies. That develop the range. Of flies there in Australia. That's flylife.com.au. And you you tying yourself? No, no not tied by myself. Okay. Um, so they're tied elsewhere, but they're yeah, like uh, patterns tied to my specification on the hooks and beads to suit the Australian climate because everything in Australia is so different to over here. You know, like we don't have uh, you know we don't have white fish. Um, like in New Zealand, like certain hooks that you'd buy over here don't suit New Zealand fish because they're too big. Mm-hmm. And it's the same in Australia, like getting the right bead weights for the types of water most people are going to be fishing and all of that stuff. 
Okay. So 100 days uh, in, a, in a water with your clients. How does it look day with client? Because uh, the, uh, the guiding here yeah. in Europe or in Czech Republic is totally different like comparison in, uh, in Australia. Can you describe us uh, how it l- looks? Yeah, so um, so I do both uh, lake guiding uh, in a boat or on the bank okay. um, and then also on the rivers. So a day, for example, um, a lot of the people who book me uh, want to learn. So they want to learn some more techniques or they want to learn to fish an area or they want to you know, uh, improve their dry fly fishing at this time of year. Uh, so we generally, I meet them at the water, so 8.30 in the morning, meet them on the water, we generally have a coffee, we go through some gear, look at their leaders, look at their, you know, talk through, you mm-hmm. know, flies, approach, all of that stuff. Then we get on the water, fish for a few hours, have some morning tea or some lunch. Um, some people like me to fish with them, so okay. together. Uh, and we fish together because they think they learn by kind of watching. Mm-hmm. Uh, other people are just want to have me watch them and, you know, coach them and explain to them where I think the fish would be sitting in these sort of rivers and areas and time of year. Then we have lunch, do the same in the afternoon and finish it about five, five o'clock, five thirty, So for the day. So, and, uh, when a client will come, uh, what do you have, uh, for, for the client? Do you have also waders? Do you have also uh, all stuff or, because, uh, when I spoke with Clint from Canada or with, uh, yep. with Corey, sometimes the client will come only in flip flops yep. and they have everything for them. Yeah. yeah. So, um, no, I don't, uh, provide waders or anything, all the gear and stuff like that I can provide. If they give me enough notice, I can arrange waders and boots for them if they specify, but when people book, we normally, they check in. But, you know, most of the people who book with me uh, are booking who are already fishing and wanting to learn a bit more. So they're already engaged in the sport and, yeah, can yeah. go on. There's a lot of guides in Australia. Uh, there's a lot of guides in, you know, Victoria, Tasmania. Um, so if you just want to go and try the fly fishing, like you can just do that. And that's what a lot of people do as well. So there's heaps of, you know, Okay, uh, I don't know if it's not secret, but uh, how much uh, costs the day with Tom German? So, uh, <laughs> well, prices might go up. <laughs> this year. So, t- tell us the new new price <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> because so you are you were forced on the world champ, so it must be more expensive, <laughs> definitely. No, my prices will go up uh, from the new year again. But um, so at the moment, it's seven hundred Australian dollars for one person okay. for the day, and then nine hundred dollars. Uh, for two people, and yeah. yeah, and that's the same on the river. If you're fishing from my boat, if you're fishing, yeah, from the bank on the lake, the river. But if you are going on the boat, so uh, there are no uh, such a uh, another expenses. <sighs> Look, there, are, yeah, there are expenses, but there's expenses everywhere. I thought it'd be simpler and easier for people. Um, you know, the lake stuff is uh, most of my lake guiding is in winter. Mm-hmm. when there's no river fishing. So I really want to encourage people to experience, you know, the amazing trout fishing on the lakes. They're such big fish. So um, it's, yeah, it's simpler that way. Okay. So you live in Victoria? Yes. And the guiding service are you doing in Victoria and in Tasmania? Just Victoria. Just Victoria? Yeah. No yeah. Tasmania. Not Tasmania. Yeah. I used to guide in Tasmania from 2014 uh, with Rainbow Lodge and Christopher Bassano and the team down there back in the day. Um, and now I'm just in Victoria on my own. So people, I had, like, I get emails for people wanting to fish in Tasmania and I refer them on to, you know, my friends who have businesses guiding okay. down there. Like I often send Martin Drosh, Martin Drosh, our yeah. friend. Yeah. I always say, if you're going to Tasmania, you want to fish with him and book with him. Okay. So we were uh, talking about licenses. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, so complicated, like in Slovakia in, in or in Czech Republic. Yeah. Uh, it's the opposite. <laughs> so, um, how it works, how does it work? So if you wanted to go fishing for trout or Murray cod, uh, golden perch, you wanted to fish for a shark, you wanted to catch anything in Victoria, it's one license. And I think it's, uh, I'm not sure. I think it might be, it's either $30, $30 or $70 for the year. And that's, you can fish anywhere, anything for the whole year. You don't need a different license for a different river, a different area, salt water, fresh water. The license is all the same. 
And uh, it's very easy because you just book online. So you literally go to the, the website, the Victorian Fisheries Authority website, you buy a license online, you enter your postal address, everything, you pay online, you pay your money, and away you go. So it's very Immediately. Easy. Immediately. Yeah. So I often have uh, clients, if they'll come to me, I'll you know meet them. Often we meet at a bakery or cafe in the morning. We'll be having coffee. Yeah. I'll say, oh, do you have a license? Like I had uh, some people come from overseas this year. I said, do you have a license? They said, no. I said, okay, that's great. So we, I pull out my phone, get them to enter their address. I put my card in and then they get their license immediately on the spot, wherever you are. And it's the same. You can do the same in Tasmania. You can do the same in New South Wales. And like we talked about earlier, some places in Australia don't even need a license. So it's like gym. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dream. <laughs> What do you think about uh, the experience which you had uh, in during uh, practice week on uh, Slovakia? So the Australian team, we we worked it out. We didn't our budget for the and because we paid it all ourselves. We're hurting because we paid I think two thousand euros in licenses for the team for our practice. So for and our Australian dollars, so not good. So we would have paid maybe. Three thousand for people back home, maybe three thousand six hundred Australian dollars, just to fish. So every day it was forty euros per person uh, to fish, and there were a few days where I only wanted to fish for two hours, just to have a little fish, and it was still forty euros. It was incredible. <laughs> and uh, did you have any any guide in uh, Slovakia? No, no, we uh, we had Google Translate. So so you, <laughs> <laughs> so we had to go. Uh, as you know, we had to find the, you know, the local fishing shop. Some of the fishing shops were very good. In Liptovsky, Mikolas, Starfish was amazing. But other shops, uh, they didn't, you know, we couldn't tell. We were told this is where we could buy the license, but we didn't know. Some of them were like a cafe or a milk bar. And Because I remember last uh, last time when I was guided uh, guys from uh, from New Zealand, we met together with Martin Drosch because he was in the time uh, with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were in Poprad and tried to get some licenses. Yeah. And they said they are sold out. So and uh, we managed because we can uh, understand Slovakish, uh, Slo Slovak language. Yeah. So, so they gave us paper with with a stamp, and it was written, "Yes, they paid for licenses, and we we can fish with this." Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that uh, without um, uh, the knowledge of this language, it's almost impossible. Yeah. It's it wouldn't be possible. Like, uh, you know, if if we didn't have a phone or technology or a way to translate, or you know, we were messaging some other teams to say <laughs> where do you get a license from, it wouldn't be possible. And because it's amazing, the fishing is amazing. You would like I would travel from Australia to fish in Slovakia for the fish. It was fantastic, but the licenses are too hard. Yeah. And even here in the Czech, so he's the I, same. I asked you today. I said, oh, so tomorrow. Uh, I'm uh, my partner Greta and I. We're going down to um, near Ottawa. Ottawa, yeah. And we, were, I wanted to go have a fish there for the next two days. And you said, "Oh, we probably won't be able to get a license." Yeah, probably they they have some uh, they own a path uh, how to get it, but yeah. uh, official pass is almost impossible. Yeah, during one day, yeah. you need a state state license. Yeah, and this is uh, possible to buy only in town halls. One day, Wednesday. And today, what's today? Today is Thursday. Okay. So we couldn't, in theory, couldn't fish until next week. No, no. Yeah. So, and this is, this is, uh, uh, in Slovakia, in Slovak, uh, Slovak, um, it's better because you can buy state license in the place yeah. where is uh, selling, where they are selling also licenses. Yeah. But the rest is uh, even worse. <laughs> yeah. Is it the same license here if I wanted to fish for Chub again? So if I wanted to fish for Chub tomorrow, is it the same license as yeah, Gray? We have we have different license. One is for trout, yeah. another is for uh, for non trout water. Trout okay. water and non trout. Ah, okay. You will be tomorrow uh, if you are going to Ottawa for grayling, you will be on trout water. Okay. In Slo uh, in Slovak, it's even more uh, complicated because they have carb water. Yeah. Uh, grayling water and trout water. Yeah. So I don't <laughs> I don't want to explain. <laughs> okay. But but uh, what is more um, confusing that the price for foreigners is higher than for 
uh, for Slovak. Yeah, uh, as in it was this championship. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's uh, all the time, not oh. only for championship. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. they they paid for for Heron twenty. Mm. Yeah, normal price is thirty for foreigners. Yeah, but during <laughs> for championship it was forty. Forty, it was so expensive. Very expensive, a very complicated system. Yeah. So, um, I I ask many times who fits much why they don't make some package for the team, and they they ask the organizer to make some special licenses for practice week. Yeah, it will be nice, huh? Isn't it? It'll be so simple. I think we had that in Tas- the Tasmanian Worlds. We had that. Everyone, every team that came to Australia for the World Championships, their license was included. Yeah, in I heard that it was really well organized in Tasmania. Yeah. And that you won't show up, that you won't uh, show the world that Tasmania is also here for uh, trout fishing. Yeah. And I heard that it was great. Yeah, yeah. and Victoria. And Victoria, sorry, <laughs> and that does my news great. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the uh, licenses were bad. It's okay. <laughs> It's still going. <laughs> yeah, still going. Hopefully, and but uh, but the organization of uh, the World Champ this year in Slovak uh, Slovak uh, Republic, it was okay, isn't it? It was amazing. I thought they did a really good job. Smoothly, uh, logistic, everything. Yeah. Did, do you have any problems? No, not at all, really. Um, the well, the rota- the the rotation was a thr- very confusing at the captain. We were both uh, yeah. ca- uh, at the captain's meeting. Um, yeah, can can you explain because uh, the uh, yeah. listeners don't know it? So uh, we were expecting to go into the world championships with a uh, as normal, where you you draw your beat, you get your beat on the bus, you're allocated your section of water to fish for your three hour session. Uh, same with Spain last year. It was, but it was four hours. You get your one beat for that time, and that's what we were practicing for. All the teams we were preparing for it, and when we got to the captains' meeting the night before the competition, we found out that, in fact, we were only going to fish for an one and a half hours on our first beat, and then would have to swap with the beat next to us and fish one and a half hours on that beat, with no break. So you literally. Fish for an hour and a half. The siren goes. You have to run, jump into the next beat, and keep fishing. And we had no idea that this was going to happen. And I know uh, beat rotation is kind of common here in yeah. Europe. You guys fish that in Australia for an Australian. I've never fished a rotated beat in my life. Yeah, but what's more, uh, must be said that uh, the beats are, especially on Orava, really long. Yes. Yeah, it was five hundred. Some of them even longer than 500 meters, and if you are finished on the end of the beat, and you want to go on the start of your uh, swapping beat, yeah, so it will be one kilometer, yeah, without break, it will yeah. took at least 10 minutes to yeah. collect your stuff, maybe even more, and 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you don't fish to compete, yeah. So it it was big advantage for uh, home team. Yes, because they know they know the places. So, but uh, that yeah, that was the only thing. Luckily, at the captain's meeting, we negotiated a half an hour break <laughs> to to look at the beats, and I think the rotation was okay um, on most of the rivers because you know beats aren't always equal, mm-hmm. and you know uh, I had it where I started on. You know the better beat and went on to the worst beat and the reverse as well. So yeah. I think it was okay uh, the rotation, but you just need to let everyone know before. Yeah, <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I spoke about it with uh, with Mario and um, president of uh, Fipsmoosh, and he said for next season is forbidden rotation. So never more. I heard that France were going to be rotations. <laughs> I yeah. was told that in France. Yeah, but but it will be on a lake because some lakes uh, will keep only a few uh, few uh, competitors. Yeah, ah, oh, but I even heard that on the rivers we were going to rotate. So, so he said to me that it's not allowed anymore. There you go. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's on the record. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, one one question I didn't. Uh, ask uh, and i uh, don't want to forget it 
you said that if you are uh, competing in a, in a Australia, you collect uh, points only if you are in a fishing uh, competition union. Yeah. Or how call it? Yeah, the yeah governing body. Yeah, the fishing. So and uh, do you pay for to entry to this to this uh, ranking? Yes, so you pay. We pay a annual me- a membership to the fishing. You call it the fishing union. We it's for us. It's Fly Fish Australia. So we all pay to be a member of Fly Fish Australia, and then you collect, uh, and that allows you to collect points. Okay, yes. and how much is this entry? Uh, I think it's a hundred dollars, hundred Australian dollars for the year. And for what are you using this hundred dollars? I don't know. Okay. Is it, what am I using the hundred dollars for? Or what are they using? What day? Uh it goes it goes into the running of everything, I guess. Um like R- running everything what? <laughs> running I don't know, running everything. Like um I don't know, organizing the nationals or some money going back to the teams. You know, we have so many uh we have like the men's you know how the money not much goes to the team. It's spread across so many teams. We have the men's team or the So the open world team, which is open, and mm-hmm. there's a women's team, women's commonwealth, men's commonwealth, and a masters. Okay. So there's so many teams to spread all the money across. Yeah, because uh, I ask just as a curious man. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> wa- <laughs> while while uh, I did, uh, I think seven years uh, our ranking. Yeah, and you, this is not ranking of Australia where are ten competition or twenty competition per year. Yeah. The highest number which I put to this uh, uh, ranking in one year it was over ninety, ninety nine zero uh, uh, competition. Yeah. So and on every competition were at least thirty people. Yeah. Some of them two hundred. Yeah. So and you put it everything uh, on computer. And so you did that. I did it. So uh, I think two years together with Lubos. Yeah. And another five, just six years uh, alone. Yeah, because Lubos <laughs> said I don't want to <laughs> do it anymore. Yeah. But because before it uh, it was done by another person, yeah, and I didn't like it uh, because it wasn't online, and you uh, know this result only in the very end of the season. Yeah, so you didn't know how you are uh, on which position you are. Yeah, so and I I did it like this that uh, on the on the Monday I collect every uh, results which were during um, uh, a weekend yeah. and put it to the computer and you see it online and it was fun because i asked some some uh, people that maybe i will uh, i will uh, ask for some money some small amount yeah. like like five dollars yeah but in our country are many many competitors so five dollars can be at least for me something And so many people said, uh, it's so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I ask about yeah. this 100. I yeah. think, um, uh, Gar- and we have the same rank. Garth does that uh, ranking. We have a Garth. He puts all the scores in from competitions and it gives us the live rankings on the website. The website, the money would go, I guess, to the website running. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I, I don't, so. yeah, I just, I just fish now. I used to be on the board and do a bit of that stuff, but now I just want to fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, do you have, uh, I have some, some questions, uh, which I ask all the time. Do you have any competition, uh, example or hero, which you are looking at? I have a few. Um, Please. I have t- two, t- two people who were really, uh, very, uh, good to me as far as coaching at world championships. Because Australia, we, we hired a, a coach. Uh-huh. externally to you know so we had the the five anglers and then we had a captain a manager and then we had like a technical coach come in and uh one of them was Martin Drosh mm-hmm. and Martin was amazing uh you know for my fishing uh he yeah. was fantastic but Martin is not human Martin yeah. is rain can write this fish <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and, I understand yeah. yeah so there was Martin and then there was also Yan Kaliri So Yan Kaliri from France. So my oh, yeah. first world championships in 2016, mm-hmm. he was our technical coach for Colorado. And he was one of the, the first guys that kind of told me to just, he said, don't worry about what the others are doing. Don't, you don't need to fish like them. You just fish like Tom. You can be Tom. 
They can be Igor. They can be anyone. Because I used to go, oh, well, so-and-so says this. Mm -hmm. And so, and you know, like Tony says this or, you know, Pete says this. And he says, don't worry. Just do Tom. Be Tom. And that helped my fishing so much. And um, what is being Tom style? Oh, I don't. That's a very good. You would have to tell me. Yeah, you haven't seen me fish other than today. So um, I don't know. Other people would have to make that judgment. Yeah, you... I, I mean, it's not a bad idea to start copy people yeah, and then uh, a little bit finish uh, yeah. my own style. Yes. You so. got to you gotta take the bits and pieces you like from some anglers exactly. and, and, you know, pull the others away. Um, I think I'm, uh, uh, I try to be, I try to be quite relaxed and laid back mm -hmm. um, just as, and kind of soak up the start of the session. And because I do get very nervous before sessions. Mm -hmm. Um This competition, I felt, <laughs> because I won the first session, and then Did I was also, yeah. and then I was fourth in the next session. Then I won the next one. Uh, the pressure I was putting on myself was increasing, so I just keep having to tell myself to relax, slow down. Let uh, you'll always get a chance. The fish always come, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter whether they come at the start of the session or the end of the session. Uh, you know, they will come. And I know this competition, I had a motto that I wrote on my hand for every session and that was believe. Uh -huh. So I had believe was my motto for the whole competition because no matter how hard it gets, just believe you can it do it, it come, yeah. and it and it will come. So I think uh, for me, I try to settle in, relax, absorb the f first few moments of the session. And then as soon as I start to get a, Uh, you know, find some fish and notice something, something changes, <laughs> a switch changes. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, fish very aggressively and push, 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 push. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I remember Yan, one saying Yan Kaliri gave me, uh, he always used to say to me in practice, he said, you must fish maximum power. <laughs> and <laughs> maximum power, Tom, maximum power. And I always remember that in me. When one, like the first session I was with uh, Lucas, still for you, mm -hmm. we were on the beats and we started the first session of this world championships. I was at the top of my beat and he was at the bottom at the join. And we so were shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, we were shoulder to shoulder watching. And I, 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 was, I had the better water to start. Um, he didn't, Lucas, poor Lucas didn't have the good water at mm -hmm. the start. And... I remember I had one pocket and I, I think I caught five grayling in it and he was above and he maybe got one or two. And then I stepped down and made a few more drifts, caught another one. And as soon as I realized that it was, you know, I had the water, I, in my head, it was like maximum power, go, it's time. You can do this. Go, go, go. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, how I like to fish. And, and then when it slows down, you need to just settle, relax. Yeah, and what do you do, for example, in a in a bus before before a session? Do you listen music or how you? Because uh, I mean, you were in a situation that uh, the medal position were really close. Yeah, and I could I couldn't imagine how it was, for example, before the very last session. Yeah. So how you um, keep your relaxing? Yeah, I think I was very relaxed because I was equal third going mm -hmm. into with David R.K. for the final session on the Oriva. And I think I was very relaxed and at peace because uh, my, my motto was believe, just believe. And I knew that if I had, you know, the my future was already written in an envelope. Yeah. The beat is already, I had already been given my water for the session. So... If it was a, you know, if it was good, I would win. If it wasn't, I would not. So I actually was very relaxed. Um, and I, you know, normally I stress about the beat. I really worry about what beat I'm going to get. And it's my, I shouldn't because you can't control it, but I do. Mm -hmm. um, this time I kind of knew that the beat was, uh, the beat was going to be the beat. And, and that was that. I was very lucky as well. I was on the bus. Um, I was on the bus with the South African angler, Barry. Okay. And uh, I got to know him really well, and he was really, really nice throughout the the whole competition. And he relaxed me being able to talk to him on the bus. It was a distraction. And then I was also on the bus with uh, like Yerky from Finland and and Jeremy from Belgium, who I've fished in lots of competitions with. So I was on the bus with friends, and I just kind of talked and 
you know, wasn't really thinking about, uh, I wasn't really thinking about the session as much as just, you know, being with them and let the session happen when the, the siren goes. Okay. Uh, what about equipment? Uh, which kind of equipment do you like? Uh, so I'm an interesting one because uh, I use s- a heap of different gear. Oh. I use, uh, I have like random gear from everything. Uh, all different brands. So um, this competition, I used... Be careful a, for your sponsors. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I used uh, I used 11-foot rods, this competition. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been moving a lot for my nymphing, a lot more to uh, to 11-foot rods. Uh, very, very fine, long leader. I was fishing 0.12 for my main line and uh, for, my, for my nymphing line, 0.12 mm-hmm. the whole way. And then the last session, I fished 0.10 the whole way. Um, spent a lot of time on my, most of my competition was on 8X and 9X. Mm-hmm. So uh, for this comp, um, I et- and actually as far as uh, I was a bit nervous because gear wise, I, I have a, I should go back. I have a very good friend uh, in Australia, Lubin Pfeiffer. He was in the Australian team, a very, very talented angler, fishes for all species. He won Commonwealth, huh? is that? Yeah, he won the Commonwealth. And his wife also. Yes, yeah, yeah, it Casey. Was, it was so crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the and couple won. Lu- Lubin's incredible because he fishes for all species with all gear. Yeah, I, I, and I, I follow him. Yeah, and uh, you know, one thing I've learned from him is the more you do with all different gear, it doesn't matter as much. You become so adaptable. Um, and I found this competition the day before the competition. I found my one of my nets. I had a, a vision net which I loved, and I noticed all of these holes, and I thought, oh. They might come, a, you know, apart in the competition. So I was fixing them, fixing them. Then I was stressed, and I thought, ah. And then I decided I had a brand new Hanak net for that I got uh, from Mayfly in Australia for the competition, in ca- for an emergency. And I th- haven't fished with a Hanak net in uh, eight years. And I thought, I'll just use it. <laughs> and um, you know, it takes one fish, and you're you're back in the groove. So. Um, the gear wise, I was, I had a lot of different rods. I had, uh, you know, I had my Orvis rod, I had Cortland, I had a vision rod, I had an RK rod, Mm -hmm. I had all of those rods with me set up and depending on how the session evolved, I used, you know, the one I needed. And if you are going, uh, fishing for fun, for leisure, what is your first choice? Uh, dry fly, nine foot four weight. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I, I, I mean equipment. Oh, equipment. Uh, for fun on the uh, lake, I've been using a uh, 10-foot-7 weight Orvis Recon. It's mm-hmm. just a nice, easy, you know, uh, relaxed rod. Uh, I don't like super, super fast action rods. Mm-hmm. Um, for my nymphing rods, I like them fast, but not too fast. Um, yeah, I don't really mind. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's, it's better, I think. Because it, if you are depend on the specific uh, type of rod and you don't have to, you, you couldn't switch. Well, if you break it, your session can be over. Yeah, exactly. Like if you are happy using anything, it doesn't matter. And as we all know, it's not the rod. It's yeah. never the rod. It's never the fly. It's none of these things. It's, you know, whoever's holding it. Yeah, we have in a team a few really superstition, can I say, superstitious yeah. uh, boys. <laughs> So well, they they believe that uh, it must be everything. Well, <laughs> yeah. You, this is funny because I don't have superstition gear wise, um, and tippet wise I didn't either because I ran out of <laughs> mid competition. Changed brands of tippet mid competition, and is okay for me. For at least two boys from our team, it will be disaster. Really? Yeah. It will be disaster. But. Luckily, it never happened. Yeah, but <laughs> I actually I fished the first two sessions in a green, uh, light shirt? green shirt with with cap, yeah, with yeah, all with the, the hood, with yeah. The hood, yeah. And then uh, I was so comfortable in it, and then it got really smelly, and I thought you change oh. it. I had to wear it every session. <laughs> 
So, so this is kind of superstition. Yes, exactly. It was superstition. <laughs> so I actually started, because uh, after I'd had the first three sessions going so well, I took the shirt in my bag. I wore different clothes to the session. And five minutes before the session starts, I changed the top. <laughs> what about controller? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I fished in that top because I felt more comfortable and relaxed in it. So maybe that's my superstition. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you said uh, the fly tying is uh, part of your uh, competition. Yeah. How many, how uh, often you are tying flies? Uh, too often. <laughs> you should too ask. Often. You should ask Greta. Um, most uh, most nights, you know, or maybe four days a week, I'll be yeah. tying. Yeah, just even if it's only you know six flies to replace for guiding or to do this, I get uh, you know. I like the proportions. I the one thing I don't mind about um uh I don't mind about the pattern or anything, but the hook has to be perfect. Yeah. I get very anxious and stressed if the hook's not. So I find that if I get, my hook gets a little toot, or like, you know, it's hooked a few big fish, I can't use it again because it's too stressful. So, so and uh, I have but, to replace but, all the time. Okay, and uh, when you have such a hook, uh, yeah. where is going this fly? Uh, in the bin. In the bin. Yeah. You don't have uh, such a another another box and you sell it later. No, because no. then it could happen to that person. Yeah. So you know the fly we were fishing today, how it had some little the bend on it was like not perfect. A few times I looked at it and was like, oh <laughs> no, God. <laughs> but I, it's, it's eagles fly. I'm just it's okay. But you got so many fish. I know, but I was very stressed. <laughs> So I I have to I feel like uh, even if I don't need the flies I feel like I need to tie because um, you know it just it helps me feel better yep. and it's one thing Yan Kaliri said to me uh, in a few world championships I said I want to sit down and relax and I don't want to feel like the pressure of the session and he said yeah but I think your fly tying is your relaxing yeah. he said just tie and then you'll feel better about yourself and when you're tying your flies especially before a competition even if you don't need them. How you tying your fly, the proportions, the bead weights, it's kind of sinking into the type of water you think you're going to be looking for. Mm -hmm. Like in this competition, the grayling, there were so many numbers in the shin deep water. water. Yeah, so by, you know, just tying a few more flies on maybe 2.3 millimeter bead or 2 mil, 2.5 it's kind of cementing mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking for. Because some co sessions you get distracted and you can end up fishing this water and then you need to go, hang on a second, I, I'm not. this is not the right water for mm -hmm. this competition. I need to be here. So I think all of that stuff helps. Okay. And uh, about tying uh, a specific fly, how many how many pieces do you tie, do you tie in one series? series? Oh, uh, I'm very bad. Some nights I will tie two of this and then two of the next. Just two? Yeah, and I know it's bad because it's not efficient. Uh, but it's sometimes it's just to replace the hooks. You know, yeah. if the hook's been opened or... Okay. Yeah, it just tied two. Yeah, but, but this is only filling the holes. Yes. So, but if you start with the new pattern yeah. and you want three millimeters, uh, one how pattern, many, how, how many... How many? How many pheasant tails does one man need? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but I ask, uh, and mainly is answer four, and the highest number I heard ten. No, I think I'm six. Six. I'm six also. I'm six. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's nice. And uh, about your fly uh, fly boxes? Oh, actually, I am six, but I get very. Uh, you know how we were talking about uh, superstitious. Yep. I feel like I always need to go into a session with five of the one thing. So, so you this sixth are going to the? Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> no, no. When I put a competition box in, you know, I always make sure uh, for a two-day competition, I have five of every fly. And that was something Yan Kaliri always said to me. He said, if you have five, then, you know, session in the morning, you can lose two and you still have three for the afternoon. If you only start with, you know. So if I understand correctly, so you prepare some spe specific fly box for competition? Yes, every competition. Okay. Yep. And new hooks for every competition. Okay. Yep. So, and another question is uh, about uh, fly boxes. Uh, are you... 
kind of fly tire that uh, is inventing all the time new type of flies or are you some kind of conservative uh, uh, fly tire so it's keeping all the time the same patterns all the time same patterns so like not like changing very much no yeah okay. if you want uh, you can do a podcast with Stuart from the Australian team <laughs> and Stuart's always inventing new patterns he's yeah. inventing patterns that were invented before as <laughs> well Yeah I I mean it's it's kind of uh I promised to myself about some flies that I didn't uh, uh make them better. Yeah. Because sometimes it's totally losing the first look. Yeah. yeah. I think um yeah I I uh, just wanted to be the same every time and it's simple. And you know everyone sometimes after a few fish the dressing changes maybe and you go oh i like this one or but um yeah i got told this uh by some of the guys in the team after practice they said oh tom what were you catching on and i said uh pheasant tail yeah. hare and partridge yeah. thrupshik yeah and they say but that's all you use everywhere and i was like that's true yeah that's all i use in yeah. australia and that's all i used in spain it's all i used here so it's the same everywhere yeah i mean it's mainly about presentation not about patterns yes yeah, some some part so uh what about fishing po- for pleasure are you going uh, to somewhere <laughs> or you are just laying down <laughs> after, go- <laughs> after guiding <laughs> for sleep no i love um i really love uh some spin fishing mm-hmm. and i love fishing for other species other than trout so i really like um Last season I did a lot of uh, fishing for brim on fly. Uh-huh. They're uh, in the estuaries mm-hmm. in the saltwater rivers. Um they ironically look they're big round and silver like uh, the nace. Mm-hmm. They like them but in the salt water. So I did I like the brim fishing on fly and on spin as well, spin mm-hmm. gear. Um I also really enjoy fishing for Murray cod. They're the Australian species on mainland Australia that grow to like one meter. They're like a You would have seen a Murray cod. Uh if you're listening have Google uh <laughs> Lubin five for Murray cod. They're the massive yeah. fish Lubin catches. They're an incredible sport fish. Does it look like a uh, perch? A huge mm. perch with mm. with uh needle They uh, have some spines but yes. not many. Yeah. No. They're like, you know, uh they're almost like a Wells catfish. They're massive. Oh. They're a cod. They're enormous. Um And and it's mainly called uh with spinning equipment. You can catch them on fly, the smaller ones on fly, but you know, to consistently catch you larger ones you Beca- want to be because on. when I saw some uh some uh, Lubin's uh, Lubin's videos it was some takes were incredible. Yeah. Off the surface. Off the well. surface, yeah. yeah. Yeah, on yeah. poppers or some yeah, yeah is, it, ca- is it this yes yeah okay. you can catch the, uh Stuart Dick who's in the Australian team he was with me rafting and he caught a like a 75 centimeter on a popper on the surface um on fly on on a eight weight too he was just using an eight weight because it's all he had um <laughs> but you know on uh you know spin gear conventional tackle it's very fun mm-hmm. and it's re- it's relaxing because it's different it's you know um, yeah i am afraid of this style Why? Because, yeah, you said in the sh- we went to the fishing shop today yeah. and I was looking at all the lures and stuff and you're like I don't do this. No, I don't do this uh, on purpose because I I am afraid that I will like it. Ah, and yeah. then I will have to divide my uh, time to another style. Yes. So I, I have so many so many uh, so many uh hobbies and so many styles. All the styles yeah. overlap. This is so good. I remember uh I took Martin Uh, we went brim fishing in Tasmania with him and he loved it and he was saying how similar the bite is to nymphing yeah. and the current and the drift it's yeah i so enjoyed similar. when i when i was in uh, new zealand uh, i was fishing with billy top uh, for snappers uh, f- and it was it was uh, for big gummy i don't know how to call it and it was spinning yeah yeah and i enjoyed it very much but I I got for my birthday some equipment and I feel sometimes like it uh, magnetizes me <laughs> and I try to <laughs> yeah. avoid it because I I know that I will like it. Yeah. One one day I will try it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess yeah, but you have so over here in uh you have so many species to catch on fly. Like your rivers, you yeah. have chub and yeah, you know true. there's so much grayling trout, there's so much um 
I guess in Australia on our rivers, you know, it's trout, it's trout, trout, trout Mm -hmm. on our lakes, you know, for trout, it's great. Then, you know, the other species, that's where you start to, you can do it on fly, but you can also do it on the other gear. And it's, Mm. it just makes sense. Like, I feel like trout are made to be caught on a fly. Mm. Uh, They're the perfect species for a fly rod. Whereas other species you can catch on a fly, but they might be better caught on other other gear, other tackle. Sure. Uh, one question, another, I don't want to uh, forget. Uh, are you fly fishing on s- salt water, on the on ocean? I've done a little, not heaps. I've done a little bit. I've okay. caught bonefish and permit and trevally. I have done that, but I'm not very experienced at that. Okay. Yeah, uh, I haven't j- done just, heaps. Just yeah. Another question. Uh, if I say unfor- unforgettable fish, which will jump in your mind? It's probably a negative one. Yeah. Uh, um, Come on. The fish, <laughs> the one of the fish that Greg caught on the lake this championship <laughs> that took the bronze. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's. I think one fish I lost a big rainbow in uh, the World Championships in Colorado in 2016. I actually blanked that session. Ooh. In the fourth session, I remember it was my first. I was very young and inexperienced, and I was fifth going into the last day, and I had a, a tough beat, and I hooked one big, uh, one big rainbow, like fifty-five rainbow, in the last ten minutes, and I knew it was my only fish, and I had him on for a long time, and ended up breaking me off under the bank, and uh, that was like again. Potentially, that was my metal fish mm-hmm. if I got that one. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's one that I remember that's very painful. But I think the most me- memorable, maybe positive, yeah, way, most please. positive, <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, that's so hard. I reckon it, it can be the very first fish in your age, uh, young age. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, one of them. I uh, look. One of them is actually a Murray cod. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like a one, 120, 130 centimeter Murray cod, Ooh. uh, that I caught with, uh, Lubin on the surface, ironically, not on fly <laughs> <laughs> just because of, it was so special four days with no bites. Yeah. I fished four days for no bites for that one fish. Um, yeah, it's very hard mentally. So that was a, that was a really big one. Um, a really memorable one. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Trout. I just love them all. This I'm okay. Yeah. It's enough. <laughs> <laughs> What about I have a set of uh, question about flies and about style. So, uh what is your best dry fly? Oh, I reckon my best dry fly is uh it's not my my fly, but my favorite dry fly is a split wing mayfly cream. Okay. Like a cream V wing. Uh, light the kind of a huge one yeah i think size 14 is my favorite size 14 or okay. 12 especially uh, in australia it's very versatile mm-hmm. single dry fly it's very good because our brown trout love to eat it um, and it's also very good for dry dropper uh, so that's probably my single favorite dry fly wet fly Wet? Do you mean is streamer the same or wet fly? No, no, streamer, 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 streamer. Okay, because in Australia, a lot of people would call a streamer a wet fly. Uh-huh. Yeah, it because I get I confuse people when I talk <laughs> about this. wet fly. Um, Zulu, I think. Yeah. So black one, black red tag. Yeah, red tag, and there is I think uh, some uh, some wire or you yeah silver wire. Silver so wire. red red tag, um, black body, silver wire, palmed. Black cock hackle and then soft hen hackle, yeah. Okay. Uh favorite your favorite nymph? Um oh, hair and partridge, I think. Hair and partridge. Uh, hair and partridge or oh, or hotspot pheasant tail. Hotspot okay. It's one or the other, yeah. Uh, but hair and partridge gold bead. Gold <laughs> bead is my favorite bead. Gold bead. Gold's my favorite bead color. Ooh, yeah. I don't have I don't have any gold bit in my boxes. Yeah. Gold was one of my best colors this competition. Wow! Yeah, I love it. I have to change it. Uh, <laughs> and now we have final streamer. So I have two. 
Uh, one, because, oh, my most memorable fish, my first ever fish in competition was caught on this fly and it's called a green machine. Ooh. It's uh, from a Tasmanian fly fisher who's who's no longer alive, but it's Bill Beck's green machine. It's a chartreuse uh-huh. uh, tag. It's got a peacock body. Okay. A green mylar rib, mm-hmm. like green rib and brown zonker. Uh-huh. Yeah, very interesting. It caught my first ever competition fish, and I love this fly uh, because of that. Very sentimental, but my favorite streamer is a red beaded black streamer. Very red, yeah, it's really classy. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's every competition ever. It works, yeah. yeah. And now I have a question about uh, favorite water, river, Ooh. and lake. Favorite uh, lake is easy. Mm-hmm. In uh, Victoria, we have a lake called Lake Parambit, mm-hmm. um, and it's a volcanic crater. So, this is a fish. fish. Yes, cool. crystal clear water, spring fed. It's absolutely beautiful. So it gets it's stocked with uh, you know trout mm-hmm. at a small size, but because of the volcanic soil and rock, it's extremely fertile. Mm-hmm. So the fish grow really big, mm-hmm. and it's just beautiful because you're in you know. You look around and you can see the, the crater. It's yeah, amazing. So that's my favorite lake. And river. Oh, that's so hard. I think um uh maybe maybe the Ovens River in Victoria for the uh look there's so the Taina in Tasmania. There's so many. I mean rivers are rivers are rivers and they're beautiful. I love the Bella in mm-hmm. Slovakia. One of my favorite in the world, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Even with these bears around? Yeah. I didn't see one this year there. <laughs> yeah, you didn't see. I, I sh- later I show you, not the bears, but the, some trucks. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Yeah. It was around Vach also. Really? And oh. some huge shit full of <laughs> corn. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David That. sent me. I was I was uh, a few times in the morning with drone. Mm-hmm. I was in this uh, cross the Bella on other side. There are some cold field, corn fields, and they said to me that there are there are many many bears in these corn fields. Yeah. So when I was flew over these uh, over these corn fields, I didn't find any. Really, with with drone. Yeah. We were there with Sarah, uh, bear hunters, but we didn't. <laughs> we didn't <laughs> New see TV any. show, <laughs> yeah. new channel for this. <laughs> yeah, bear hunters. yeah, but but I heard that uh, during during harvest season for corns, yeah, they they are taking their um, vacation, and they stand uh, around the cornfields and they are running running bears. Wow. And they they are, they were counting about eighteen runs oh from God. one field. Wow, when that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite comp favorite, competition. Favorite competition. Uh, I really liked uh, the world championships in Italy. Uh, Trentino. 2018. 2018. I thought it was beautiful. Uh, I didn't go... I, it wasn't my best competition, but I loved the venues. I loved the rivers. The yeah. Saka is Lago di Cornicello. Cornicello is yeah. stunning, even if I didn't like my beats. <laughs> and I had to watch, I was standing, you know, on the other side watching Voita catch them. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, another question is because many people think about competitors that they, they are without mistakes, uh, no fuck ups. Yeah. Uh, do you have any fuck up during competition or uh, during preparing? Never. Never. <laughs> of course, so you are all perfect. the time. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, lots. I think uh, I had one this competition, I think. I I put my rod uh, before a session on the VAR. I put my rod in stinging nettles. Stinging? You know, nettles uh, that sting your hand. You have them everywhere in Europe and your yeah, hand gets I, hot. I know, I know, I know. And I put my rod, I set them up, put my rods down. Walked off and had to get the rod out of the stinging nettle. <laughs> Sorry. So, and there was tangled. And yeah. I think you get every competitor ever gets, m- makes mistakes. Uh, you sure, know, you get sure. tangles. If you don't get tangles, you're not pushing your gear to the limit. You're not pushing your leader to the limit. The flies you can cast. 
you're not, you know, you may not be pushing, getting as close to the bank as you could for that cast. So I think it's not for com- competition anglers it's and competitors. It's not about how, whether you make a mistake or not. I think it's how you go after you make the mistake because mm-hmm. that's most important. Yeah. It's, if does making a mistake change the way you're going to fish going forwards or does, you know, does it not? Because if you make a mistake and then that stops you making those important casts, then, you know, you're probably not going to be as successful as you could be. It's all about how you mentally deal with a mistake, I think. So it could be answer for another question, which I didn't <laughs> ask advice for uh, rookies. I think that... <laughs> Yeah, I think you don't be afraid because you're always going to have a tangle. And if it's not you getting a tangle, it's your controller tangling your leader for you. Yeah. And you, that happened, you know, this competition at times. And you can't, you know, I think uh, I follow the competition bass fishing in America. I love the bass fishing. Mm-hmm. And my favorite uh, saying from one of the competitors, uh, Brandon Palinuk, is control the controllables. Yep. And we all know it, and it's very easy to say. It's very hard to do. Mm. I think you just worry about what you can and control. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's nice. It's nice saying. Uh, and uh, we are almost uh, finished. And I want to ask all the time. I asking about gadget. Do you have something on your vest on your special prepared yeah no i've gone very very simple so you know waders so I, i wear the orvis waders uh, but sims have them too you know they come with a pouch okay i just take that pouch for this competition that's all i take really so, yes so um because uh, because i saw that you have some chest pack you don't have wear no i don't wear in competition Yeah. You don't wear it. No. Yeah. Um, so I just have a little pouch and on the front of my waders I clip a, a thing with nippers, tippet. Yeah. yeah, or nippers. I have a little patch with tippet. Mm-hmm. So I had 7X, 8X, 9X in there. Then on my other side I had, you know, the neoprene fly patch? No, I know. So I had a neoprene fly patch with all my competition flies. In the pouch I had um, my wax indicators, the mm-hmm. neon wax to wax on my indicator. Then I had uh, some floatant and I had uh, forceps and hook sharpener, which I don't like to use because of it. <laughs> I don't know why it's there. And then just a little box of dry flies. Not many. That's all I take with me. So if it's important enough, because if I carry too much on me, it's a distraction. Okay. I only need what I only, I only want to have what I need for this session. And if, I am in so much trouble in the session. If it's going so badly that I don't have what I need on me, uh-huh. it's worth taking five minutes to go to my bag to get my other fly box out or my other tippet. Mm. So I always have the other stuff with me on the bank, but is so long. I mean, you've probably saw the photos of me at the water yeah. <laughs> where I fell in. Every, yeah. I just, the, the less I carry, the simpler, the quicker I can be. If I fall over, it's not a problem. I hook my net onto the back of my uh, waders mm-hmm. and then I'm super light yeah, and easy. It's, it's, it's nice, nice um, recommendation. I, I feel like that uh, when, I, when I was uh, competing, I like to have my fly vest the same for practice, the same for competition, that I know which yeah. uh, pocket I have everything. But this is also a nice tip. Yeah. yeah, I think so long as, yeah, because that's how I, what I wear when I guide as well. I just have pouch, fly, guiding fly patch, tippets, mm-hmm. and then backpack. So I think, yeah, it, as you said, you just wear what you fish with in practice, you fish mm-hmm. with in competition. It's the same. Yeah, and one thing was also a little bit strange on uh, on the competition, and I remember now about it. You have backpack on the on the bank. Yeah, controller can carry it. What do you think about it? Controller can. Oh, they're not allowed to carry it. Yeah, <sighs> it's hard, it's especially in in the towns. In a yeah, it's a hard one um, because you're not controllers aren't allowed to help with gear. So this is not help. 
No, but for me it would be because I carry extra fly boxes in my bag. So I don't know. Yeah, I'll let someone else deal with that. <laughs> like not get in trouble. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, Tom. We are on the end. No so more questions. No more questions. I, I have many questions. Yeah. But uh, we, I promise you that I will take you for ramen. The best ramen best in ramen Czech Republic. Best ramen in Czech Republic, maybe even in the world. So yeah. I, I have to uh, fill this, uh, fill this uh, promise. And also one hour to go your uh, train to Prague. Yes. So it's quite hurry. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. It was great to having you here. Here. And uh, hopefully we will meet uh, on other side of the world. Yeah, we'll see you next year when you come to Australia. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank awesome. you very much. Thanks, and Igor. Bye bye. Cheers. Safe journey here. Cheers. Thanks. Toto byla kompletní verze epizody podcastu Naviak. Díky moc podporovatelům a mecenášům za to, že jste si koupili předplatné. U dalšího dílu se těšíme sledanou.